Hey VR Vomit subscribers, this is John. Today we're going to talk about how is a 3D VR experience made. So this video will be talking about virtual reality experiences that utilize full interactive 3D rendering. This video is not about 360 degree video VR, and that's a completely different topic. Most people are pretty naive when it comes to what they think it takes to make a VR experience. There's a lot of misconception by ad agencies and other companies out there as to what it actually takes to make these sort of things. It's completely ridiculous to expect a good, high-quality VR experience within the sort of deadline of a TV commercial. I can't tell you how many agencies and companies that we've been approached by who think this is a fast process, and it's not. So let's break it down a little bit and go over the steps in creating a VR experience. So first off, everything starts with art and with story. Good games, good experiences, good tools all require pre-planning. And that often means deciding how your users should feel and what they should experience while they're using your content. So although pre-planning takes many forms, it could be storyboards, it could be scripts, it could be game design documents, there is almost always some drawing and design involved uh, to plan what things are going to look like because this is a visual medium. Art concept is an iterative process. So artists go and with direction, they sketch and they paint their interpretations of the ideas they've been presented with. So after art is made, it's time to build 3D assets. And this consists of many steps, the first of which is modeling. So modeling is the process by which a 3D character, a prop, or an environment is first created in the computer. It's like building with digital clay, where an artist pushes and pulls points in the computer until they have a 3D form. After the modeling, the digital assets must be textured. So textures and shaders are responsible for controlling what an item looks like, they control attributes such as an object's color, its roughness, whether it looks like metal or wood, etc. So after an asset has been modeled and it's been textured, if it's going to be animated, it's going to require rigging. So rigging is a very cumbersome process to make. It makes a 3D model into a digital puppet, if you will. And technical artists, they put bones into a character to allow it to be animated and moved. Animators pose the characters and they come up with animation snippets that will be combined within the game or the experience. Animation in interactive VR games uh, cannot simply be keyframed straight through as you would in an animated film. And this is because game characters often must respond to the player's input and therefore their movements can't be known ahead of time. So an animator may make a walk cycle, a run, a crouching animation, a jumping animation, etc. And within the game, these are all blended together, depending on what a character needs to do. The logic of what animation gets triggered when can be very complex, and even involve special circumstances and artificial intelligence programming. Often experiences require animation not only of characters or modeled assets, but of effects. Things like snow, fire, rain, magic, etc. This animation goes to an effects artist to work on. And these artists create assets that can be used in the final experience through complicated simulations and rendering techniques. After all the digital assets are built for a VR experience, they have to be assembled in a game engine. This is often the job of a level designer, and all the models and props are brought into the game engine and they're put in their proper place in the world. So at this time, digital lights then have to be set up so that the assets in the world can actually be seen. Lighting is a complex process and it requires a good understanding of the final goals of the project. So during this whole process, all these things I've previously described, building and assembling the assets, there are hordes of people working on the logic systems of the experience or the game. And these are often very technical artists or programmers 
that are gluing all the pieces together with code. They make sure that if a character collects digital coins, that the coins add up in a player's score. They control systems to change the time of day, or to make it rain, snow, or be sunny. Game logic and mechanics are a huge part of the interactivity of a VR experience. And these technical gurus, they make sure that everything works properly and that the experience doesn't have any bugs or glitches. This is accomplished through user testing, a process that can take anywhere from months to even years depending on the complexity of the experience. So that's a very broad overview of what it takes to actually build a VR experience. As you can see, it's far from easy. Such an endeavor done right takes not only time, but it takes money, and it takes many talented individuals. So the next time you experience a VR game or an animation, think about how novel it really is. VR experiences can be made by very small teams or single individuals, but it takes a long time. All right, did we leave anything out of the process? What do you think about how VR is made? Go ahead and leave your comments below, and please don't forget to subscribe.